Cuban hat animal. Thunder, 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 yes. Thundercats, Mumro and Lionel, each sold separately. I'm Mumro, want the sword of Gundera. With this secret power ring, battery not included, you can make Lionel's eyes light up. With battlematic action, you control their swords. The sword is mine, Lionel. That's what you think, Mumro. Thunder, Thundercats. Thundercats, Mummer and Lionel with light up eyes, each sold separately, new from LJN. All right, welcome back, boys and girls, to another edition of Top 10 Toys. Now, this week, I did something a little bit different in that I reached out to the community and took a poll to see what everybody wanted to see. And uh, as you might have noticed, Thundercats won out. Now, I offered a couple of options. I was pulling for Mask because I was looking forward to doing Mask toys. Clash of the Titans is a favorite of mine. And then I also put out Random Goodness as an option because there's still plenty of weird little things that we can still talk about from Boglins to Rock Lords to uh, Sectars, a bunch of other weird stuff. So we'll get to all that eventually. But for this week, we are doing Thundercats. Now, this is a fantastic toy line. I want to do this one justice as best that I can, but uh, this might be a little bit longer than normal, because getting this down to 10 was really, really tough for me. So, I'm going to go in first and kind of lead off and give you some you know, just some idea of some of the other toys that are out there that I'm not actually putting in my uh, top 10 list. Uh, there are a lot of different ver versions and volumes of uh, Thundercats that have come out over the years. From as recent as uh, last year, Super 7 uh, came out with these Ultimate-like editions of uh, Thundercats. I think they started out in September of last year. They came out with like a first wave. Uh, I think we might have had another wave already. And these are just gorgeous, gorgeous figures. You can see that there's just excellent sculpts. You're getting multiple heads and weapons and uh, all kinds of accessories that go along with these uh, these higher-end uh, editions uh, from Super 7. And I pretty sure uh if i'm if i'm correct that these are actually based off the 2014 uh mattel molds that came out you know not that long ago just kind of reissued with a little bit even more extra than uh what was in that set but that is also another great line uh you can see just the details that they have there on lino with the extra hands and again extra weapons and accessories and this pretty cool mumra it's just another great line that just kind of been revamped by uh by Super 7 here. And you can see what they had done is like with Mumra, they gave the cloth coat, you know, cloth cloak to kind of uh, add an extra level of uh, authenticity, I guess, to the toys. Just fantastic, fantastic molds. You can just see that a lot of the fun stuff you get in here, what looks like Mama even comes with uh, Mumra in uh, this Ultimate Edition. Now, again, that was just last year, which also gave us the uh, Thundercats Roar uh, cartoon, the animated series. I, I will admit I didn't check this out. I just didn't have much interest. Uh, it's nothing against the animation style in and of itself. I mean, the whole Steven Universe, OKKO OK kind of thing has its place, but I just didn't want it mixed with Thundercats personally. So I didn't bother checking this one out. If any of you did, and if it's worth my time, please let me know, and, and I'll give it a look-see. But it's just not something that really, uh, really that I wanted. So I just kind of left it on the side. Let's see how you handle all the Thundercats! Yeah. Teamwork gives the best! Thundercats! Oh! Uh, some, in a similar vein, I'm not a real huge fan of these uh, reaction toys. I mean, they're okay. I get what they are. Uh, it's fun to get toys made of some of the more, you know, obscure properties and just, you know, figures you might not have gotten normally. But, I don't know, I'm, I'm just not a huge, huge fan of the reaction line. They're a bit too basic for me for these days. I get the whole retro feel of them, but there is also that reaction line also released last year for Thundercats. And it's just, I don't know, it's just personally, it's just not really for me. So I don't do much collecting there. They're fun to look at. It's fun to see who they're making, but uh, it, it's just not a line that, um, like I said, that's really got a lot of interest for my uh, for my dollars. So uh, you can see here, there's a, there's a few different uh, figures that they released for the reaction line, but... Uh, Again, collect them if that's your thing. Otherwise, yeah, there are other options. We can move back just a couple of more years, uh, back into 2011. And this is uh, when they kind of rebooted the franchise with some newer animation, like kind of newer designs. It was definitely more updated feel to these uh, to the characters. More like a you know, manga, manga. Definitely updated from that 80s. Uh, and this is a pretty fun uh, toy line, too. I actually bought a bunch of these for my son because he started getting into it. 
you know, watching it on Netflix. And uh, I got him a bunch of these Thundercats figures, including some of the bigger, uh, you know, play toys. Like he had the, you know, the sword and the, and the glove there. But with that said, you can still collect these as well. You can see the Lion-O and the Mumra. They're, they're, very well done. These are all they're on the smaller side. They're not quite the big six inch figures. Uh, they're probably, they're not quite as small as like the three and three quarters either. They're kind of somewhere in between, but it was kind of a fun line and got a lot of posability, a lot of articulation, uh, pretty cool weapons. Then they had a, a nice little selection of figures. So definitely give those a look, see as well. But for my money and what we're doing here, we are really going to focus in on the Thundercats of the eighties. So, um, uh, Let's just get right into it. Now, Thundercats, again, is a classic, classic series and classic toy line. There isn't a lot that we can really say. I mean, I've got my, yeah, my son's, like, sword here, just as an example. It's just fantastic, like, toys that they made for these things. It's just... I don't know. It's something that you see on the shelf that you want to play with. So even before we get to the actual 10 list, I got to run through some of these other figures. Cause like I said, I just want to be able to cover as much of this as possible. Cause it is an excellent toy line. And there are a lot of, a lot of good, cool options here. Now we're starting off here. I'm just going to show you some of these villain figures. Uh, these all run kind of close to the same price wise. Like if you're looking at them in the package, these were all pretty close to like 200 bucks. So, I mean, we're looking at uh, monkey in here, uh, which is kind of fun, as well as, uh, you know, Slythe, I guess I'm saying that uh, properly. He He's a little bit more expensive than the rest, and he's a bit heavier figure, uh, a little bit more plastic there in that mold, but he's at about 225 So you're paying about 25 bucks more for uh, uh, this henchman uh, than you are for the rest of them. Now, uh, a lot of really cool weapons in here. This was this line was made by LJN. And uh, a fun little fact that I found out a little bit later is that some of these weapons are actually remolds of the Avengers Dungeons and Dragons figures that I covered a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you, you'll see, I think, uh, the Snowman figure in particular has a reused helmet and a weapon, I think. That perhaps even Slight's axe that we just looked at might have even been a, a reuse. I'm not 100%, but it's LJN. They, they had the molds. They just used them to make, you know, make what they could. Vulture Man was another pretty cool one, also in that like $200 range, um, you can see. And these figures also had that similar Battlematic that the Dungeons and Dragons figures had as well, which is a little bit of the motion, a little bit of the action uh, that the figures did for you. So Jackalman's another one. Jackalman, Jackalman, however you want to say it. Uh, 200 bucks him for him as well. And again, they all had these fun little figures. Now, this Rataro character looks like a rat shogun. It's a little cheaper. He's only about 170 but... I mean, is there really that huge a difference between $170 and $200 when you're really looking at it? Not to me. Like, it's all basically about 200 bucks. So, just cool, cool figures. And I mentioned the little figure earlier on, Mamut. They made one uh, on a little bit of a larger size um, as a little companion piece uh, for this toy line as well. And that's also about $180 uh, to get it. He, he didn't have a lot of articulation, but it was kind of a fun little, uh, little toy to have there on the side. Now, you know, pretty cool bulldog and all. Now, if you look, we also, of course, will be looking at some of the vehicles and the play sets. I'm going to kind of save those for our bonus section outside of the top 10, because once we get to those prices, you'll see that they really could have skewed the list. And then I just would have been doing a, a huge list of like play sets and uh, vehicles. So we just kind of separate into two. So just for our purposes here, though, these ones aren't going to make that bonus list. And the Hover Cat is about a $200 box figure. You can get cheaper ones, loose and a lot of incomplete ones, uh, you know you know, in that $50 range even, but it's cool stuff to look out for. I mean, there's are fun toys and fun, uh, you know, fun things to play with. The Mutant Sky Cutter is another one. This one's a little bit more expensive at $275, and he's got a very cool futuristic kind of feel. Like, you would think everything's going to be more on that sword and sorcery uh, kind of vibe, but uh, these really are uh, really high-tech looking uh, vehicles, if you ask me. So the sky cutter there is kind of cool, as well as the mutant nose diver, which goes back to about that hundred eighty dollars. But it, it's just again very clean look to these toys. Look at the with the decals and the the designs. It's just it's excellent work. Uh, I gotta say, fun fun stuff. So with that said, we're just gonna get right to the figures of our top ten. Now, starting us off at our number ten spot, we're looking at Groon. Uh, now this character, yeah, it's pretty cool. He's got a mace. Got a little tough look to him there. 
He's Groon the Destroyer. Now, he's coming in at about $300 uh, for a sealed uh, Groon figure, and that's why he's coming in last on our list at number 10. Again, very, very cool design. You got that one tusk kind of look going there, so it looks like he's seen some action because he most likely should have had two, but he lost one somewhere along the line. Um, definitely a cool little figure, and 300 bucks is why he's rolling in at number 10. And then following Groon, we're going to look at number 9, and we've got Chitara. And uh, she came packaged in that initial series with Wily Kit, uh, which is just kind of like a little PVC kind of stand-in figure. She Wily Kit didn't have any posability. Uh, she was just kind of like a little extra add-on. And obviously, since they were the kids of the series, they're a little bit smaller sized. So they it's kind of kind of packaged with uh, some of the other figures. But Chitara is, is a popular figure and a popular character for the line. And uh, she's coming in, like I said, at number nine. And uh, that's at about $330. So... She's a little bit more expensive uh, on the high sale price that I found while doing my research this week. Which will take us into number eight. And number eight's a little bit later in the run where they kind of uh, started adding a little bit more of uh, extra characters. And these Berserkers, this Berserker line, we had Hammerhand coming in at uh, number eight. And he's about $335 uh, packaged. And interesting, interesting design. This weird kind of space pirate kind of vibe that they had going there with this huge hand, which was kind of cool that you can grab other figures with it. It was kind of oversized. I mean, his face, he kind of looks like, like a really deranged Muppet, like somebody from Dr. T's band, a uh, mixture of animal, and I don't know. It, he's just very interesting looking character. And uh, that hand is a you know, fun little thing that you could, you know, you can play with. Fun little extra feature. Which will take us to number seven, and uh, this will take us to Burble Bill. Yeah. It looks like your uh, Teddy Ruxpin got most of the hair pulled off of his face, and he's wandering around. It, this looks like it could even be a Battlestar Galactica-type character. Uh, I don't know. It's just a odd, odd figure. But at $355, this is why it's coming in at number 7. And uh, this isn't the only Burble figure, but this is the one that I found uh, selling. And, yeah, this robot mixed teddy bear thing is just... It's a little bit... A little bit goofy, but a little bit creepy as well. I don't know. It's got a, a weird mix. It just makes me a little uneasy when I look at it. I don't know. Just not uh, not something I would really want to have hanging around uh, these days. I don't know. Just gives me, gives me a little bit of the creeps. There's something about the dead eyes and that red nose. Maybe it's the clown thing. I don't know. But that's gonna. We're just gonna move on from that. And uh, our next one is uh you know Safari Joe at number six. Uh yeah. Again, later in the line, so we start reaching almost like in that Ninja Turtle line where we just start getting some a little bit oddball, crazier characters. So we got this Safari Hunter that, uh, you know, I guess would kind of make sense in uh, having a whole toy line of cat themed figures that these big cats would be hunted by a hunter. Uh, we could have gotten somebody who looked more like Craven, but instead we've got a little bit of a mixture of uh, Craven and Elmer Fudd, I guess. I don't know, so, but Safari Joe is about four hundred and ten dollars uh, in the in the package. If you can uh, find him out there, still pretty cool. I mean, it, it is what it is. Some of these are not that easy to find, and even loose these can do pretty well in a few a couple hundred dollar range. And uh, if you uh, are watching this on uh, my channel at the end, even after all these extras that we're going over, I'm still going to give you a few honorable mentions, and those are going to be just some high loose figure sales uh, that I came across. So if you're interested in just the loose figures check out the honorable mentions coming up uh, later in the video. So with that said, we're just going to move into our top five. And starting out our top five, we've got Tigra coming in here at $609 at our number six spot. Now, what's interesting to note about Tigra is that there are a couple of different versions. Uh, I mean, apart from the fact that, as I noted with the uh, Chitara, there was the set that came packaged with uh you know, the smaller kid, the Wily Kit was with Chitara and Wily Cat was packaged with Tigra. But then there's also the versions with them packaged without, you know, the kid characters. But in addition, Tigra is one of the few figures that actually has two separate molds. Uh, if you look, the one that I first noted with the $610 price that's coming in at number six is the, uh, what they're, I found on my research, the young version. I guess the face is a little bit of a younger look, whereas the old version, it's a little bit more squat, a little bit more brutish. Uh, than that, yeah, the young look. So they're calling that one the old uh, Tiger. And uh, both of them have, you know, the, pretty much the same, you know, 
sets, the pretty much the same accessories, just the mold of the figure just changed. And the prices aren't that far off. I think the old figure was still in that like five, six hundred dollar range, but the young is the one that uh, again came in at the high. So I put these little guys side by side so you can see a little bit of the difference in the body type, uh, how they molded, and even in the head. Like the young has kind of a, a taller head, while the older one's a little bit more round and a little bit, like I said, a little wider and a little bit uh, more. Uh, I don't want to say muscular because they're both pretty muscular looking, but just the frame is completely different between the two. And again, Wily Cat came uh, packaged with Tigra. And again, PVC, no articulation in Wily Cat. It's just a little stand standee figure that would just uh, kind of uh, accompany the team, I guess. So we are going to move on to uh, another fan favorite, number four, Panthro. Panthro is a pretty cool character. His voice is just iconic. I know that was, uh, you know, Bill Cosby's dad on the Cosby show who did the voice. It's just one of those voices that just, it, I don't know, it, it just pitch perfect. So $625 uh, for our number four here. Again, another pretty cool figure, uh, cool design. Uh, I like the gray and the blue color scheme, and I like the, you know, the nunchuck kind of action that he had with the extra long chain. It was a fun weapon for him and a pretty cool toy. And at number four, we're, we're talking, we're $625. These are not cheap uh, when we're talking about these uh, in the package and even loose. Uh, depending on what you have accessory wise, you can do pretty well with a lot of these as well. So. Moving down to the top three, our number three is, you know, a main hero here, Lionel. $650 for Lionel is why he's coming at number three. And that first edition uh, that came out, they also came with like the batteries and the light up eyes that you might have saw in the commercial that kind of kicked us off here. A lot of little accessories for Lionel. I mean, he was the, uh, you know, he was the main, the main guy. He was the He-Man of the toy line. He was the main guy, the Optimus Prime. He had the, the cool sword. He had, had the claw glove. And like I said, the ring that you can get and uh, the light up eyes made him uh, a little bit a little bit more special i guess in that sense but 650 bucks for him which is why he is coming in at number three and as we move down our list number two is the big bad this is mumra also with that light up eye feature but mumra packaged as you know as we can see here eight hundred dollars eight hundred eight hundred that's what we're talking about here these are expensive toys when we're getting into the uh, the higher ranges. And these aren't graded prices, mind you. There are graded figures out there. These were the loose sales that I could find of, uh, not loose sales, the raw, ungraded, but uh, in-package sales that I found, like the high sale prices. But there are graded ones out there that sell for even more. So if these prices uh, seem pretty steep or astounding to you, just look, imagine or go look up some of these graded uh, AFA prices because they are way up there as well. But number two, Mumra. Again, a lot of extra accessories. He's got a tinier version of Mamut included here. You could take the, the headdress off of him. He had a couple of swords. The ring and the light up uh, action there for him as well made this a pretty cool toy. Another fun little tidbit that goes along with Mumra is that there was a mail away of like the older version, almost like the wizard mummy kind of vibe look. But that was a mail away. You had to collect uh, points and uh, send those in. As you know, we did back in the day. You had to go and collect uh, points and mail them in for some figures. Like GI Joe did that, and uh, a lot of toy lines did this back in the day. So Mumra, this Mumra wasn't one that was on shelves, but is one that uh, is pretty cool to have. So if you wanted it, you had to do your due diligence and uh, get out a stamp and send in some points cut out from your packaging. So all that leaves us is what our top, our top number one, on our number one on this list is. Pumira, $850 for her. Uh, she became a little bit in, I don't know if it was C, the series the second wave or uh, series three, but she came a little bit later in the run. This was another female character uh, to add to the toy line. Not that easy to find. As you can see, $850 for a packaged one, but even the loose ones uh, for her are a few hundred dollars. So this is a tough figure to find in uh, any form, whether it be in package or out of the package. So keep an eye out for it. She had this weird little slingshot and had this 
definite 80s vibe going with her look that they kind of gave her. Uh, I, I've seen some comparisons to her to the uh, the slave girl at the end of uh, Weird Science, uh, and I could see it. She does have that kind of punk rock look to her, which is kind of cool, but uh, she is our number one for our top 10 list. But again, I still have more to show you because we didn't even get to the cool vehicle stuff yet. So just hang in there. We're going to go cover some of these, uh, these bonus picks in a second. Now, for our bonus selections, we're going to go looking in some of the extra stuff that isn't completely just the straight figures. So uh, this is still some fun stuff that we can take a look at and just appreciate this toy line. But I still have these kind of ranked in a way of uh, building price and building value because some of this stuff really, really gets up there. So our first one is, this is the original light up uh, Eye of Thunder, the Sword of Omens, uh, $325 for it in the package for the original version. I had shown you earlier, uh, my sons, this is the version from the 2011 series. And this one has, you know, some light up action, which no longer works because my kid broke it. And, uh, yeah, collapses and does a lot of fun stuff. The original didn't do all of that, but it is still a pretty cool sword, as you can see here. And that one is $325 bucks if, uh, if you want one. Following that up, we have this, uh, it's, Kind of like a little add-on. It's not a full-on vehicle. This is a uh, the Thunder Wings. You can basically put the figure in there, and he can you know fly around with these Thunder Wings. Uh, definitely pretty cool. Five hundred bucks though uh, for this Thunder Wing in a box. But outside of that, in the box, there is also a version where you can buy Lino with the Thunder Wings, and you get the figure with the wings as well. Uh, so there is that option. There they did do this for the villains as well. I think it was like a lash thing, and maybe we'll get to that a little bit later. But the Thunder Wings was a pretty cool for the good guys, a little extra. Again, can't quick, quite say it's a vehicle because it's more of like a little add-on thing, a little glider almost. Now, up next, this is probably the most iconic, uh, most memorable vehicle for this line, and this is the Thunder Tank. You know, I know at the controls. Thunder Tanks instantly armed for battle. Laser guns, stun guns, mechanical jaws. Release the boulders and crush the Thunder Tank. Nothing can stop Thunder Tank. Thunder Tank and Bridges each sold separately. New from LJN. Now, this is a awesome, awesome toy here. 525 bucks for it in the box. But if you look at the pictures of it outside the box, this thing is just really cool. Like, when you were push it across your floor, like the claws move. They, it just looks like it does in the cartoon. It's just a lot of fun and definitely something that, uh, yeah, people still want, which is what supports that higher price. I mean, 525 bucks is, uh, it's pretty steep, pretty steep for a toy. But if you think that's bad, as I noted before, uh, the Luna, the Luna Lasher, which was like kind of like the villain add on piece. It's not quite a full on vehicle. It's just a little snap on thing. You can put on the back of one of your villains and, uh, has these little extra missiles and rockets. And that's a $600, $600 figure or $600 toy. I should say, I shouldn't say to figure because this is without a figure. This is just the Lunar Lasher in a little box and that's $600. But I believe like Lion-O came with the, uh, Thunder Wings. I think there might have been a Mumra version that also came with the uh, with the Luna Lasher, but I just don't have an image handy to show you on that one. But I believe that was the case. But we're gonna move on. Almost through our list, so just hang in there for a few more minutes as we look at the Astral Moat Monster next. Nine hundred and sixty dollars for this thing. This came in a little bit of a box in a little box, um, similar to uh, some of the other things we've just seen recently. It's bigger than a normal figure. You can see here is this weird little. I don't know. It's like a chicken rat bat creature thing. I don't know. It's definitely creepy looking, uh, but almost a thousand dollars for this. And again, loose, it's almost as pricey. So box, I know a lot of times you look at these prices and you're saying, I'm showing you this stuff with the box. How, how easy it is to find some of the box. It ain't easy to find this stuff in the box, but even loose. Some of these things are the price is basically the same on some of these toys, which is definitely pretty crazy. So we're going to keep rolling on and just check out the base. This is the Cat's Lair. Uh, iconic image from the series. Just uh, how cool are bases? Like, I don't know. I, they just definitely, there's just something special about them, whether it's Castle Grayskull or the Doom Tower to uh, just Snake Mountain, even just bases are just really cool. The G.I. Joe Terror Dome. I don't know. This for me, I just think they're one of the cooler things out there. I unfortunately didn't have a Cat's Lair when I was younger. I wanted one, but. You know, my parents did draw the line somewhere. 
I was a spoiled kid, but there still was a line, and apparently that line was drawn at the cat's lair. But if you take a look at this thing, definitely really cool. How the claws kind of open up to, you know, have show this little storage area. There's stair stairway going up to some doors. There's it's a lot of cool little fun things here with the ladders and seating, and definitely a cool toy. Uh, again, I'm jealous. I wish I had one, but I unfortunately did not. And we're going to move on again to the villains. Uh, Mamra's Tomb Fortress, $1,800 for this thing. And it's not even that large of a toy. If you can see in the pictures, this is just, it's similar to a base, but it's more just the tomb that kind of gives you the big reveal of uh, the mummy Mamra that you had, you know, you have here with the, the Minotaur on the one side and like the lizard snake man on the other you get the kind of egyptian vibe going uh i can't think of the all the egyptian god characters names but i know they have them and i think that's kind of you know, the vibe that they were def definitely going with here with mumra and eighteen hundred dollars for this thing definitely cool another one i did unfortunately not own myself but kind of wish that i did which just leaves us with one more one more thing to look at and this is the tongue of Saurus. I know it's kind of a silly name and kind of makes you snicker a little bit to yourself of what they might be talking about, but the Tungasaurus is $2,000 for this thing. Two grand for this toy. It's crazy. It's not even that big. I mean, it's, as you can see here, it's, I can't really call, quite call it a vehicle. It's, I don't know, it's a creature, I guess. It's a, a villain, it's a toy you could play with, but two grand for in the box, which, Again, seems crazy, but I also saw loose sales of this for about $1,800. So again, boxed, unboxed, some of this stuff is so hard to find that the price on both is basically the same. So that's my list. Hopefully I did Thundercats justice. Hopefully you guys like this. Please like and subscribe to my channel as well as the Tales from the Flip Side. Um, I, thanks for stopping by, and hopefully you, you like this list. I don't know which toy line I'm going to do next. Maybe I'll put out another poll, or maybe I'll just do something that uh, is a, you know, something I just feel like doing to kind of fill that time. But I do like the audience engagement and uh, find out what you guys actually want to see. So the poll was kind of fun to kind of take that pulse and what uh, what everybody else was looking for. So I'm definitely going to do that again. I just don't know if I'm going to do it the next time out or not. But keep an eye out for it, and uh, definitely love hearing your feedback. So please. Put comments in here. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. And again, like, subscribe, hit that alert button so you're getting alerted when we're dropping videos and when I'm dropping videos because I'm trying to do uh, yeah a lot of more fun stuff. And like I said, if you're watching this on my channel, I still got a couple of more fun things for you. But otherwise, I will see you guys all next week.